All right, next thing we're going to talk about is how to find exact values uh, for any angle. <coughs> what you need to know is we're not going to get decimal answers, so we're actually going to find the true ratio. We're not going to figure out what the decimal is, so we've got a five little step process we're going to do. We need to figure out what a quadrant our, our angle is going to terminate in. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's important to figure out what quadrant our angle is going to terminate in. Uh, we need to find the reference angle, and then we need to draw and la label the triangle based on our reference angle. So once we identify the reference angle, uh, it should either be a quadrant angle, which we will have no triangle for, or most of these will actually have a 30 degree reference angle, 45 or 60. So hopefully another 45, 45, 90 triangle and 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then we're going to apply the sines uh, to the sides based on the quadrant. So obviously some quadrants, the x's are positive and the y is positive. Others, they may change based on the quadrant. And lastly, we're going to find the correct ratio. So let's see if we can't look at an example. Uh, on the first one, we have the cotangent of 19 pi 6. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out which quadrant that's going to terminate in. It's a positive angle, so we're going to rotate counterclockwise. From here to here, that's 1 pi. In terms of 6, that would be 6 over 6 pi, so pi 6 pi 6. Another half a circle will be 12 6. And then here, we would be at 18 6. Well, we're trying to go to 19 pi 6. So we have one six left. Well, one six is less than a half, so we're actually going to terminate in the third quadrant. So that's going to help. Uh, it's easy to find our reference angle when our angle's in radians, as long as our denominator is three, four, or six. So since our denominator is six, it's just pi over your denominator. Uh, or you should be able to tell that uh, we are at eighteen six here, so we had one more six to go. So this angle is going to be pi six. And what we can do is we can convert this into degrees. Uh, if your, denom if your uh, fraction is, has a denominator of 3, 4, and 6, to determine what it is in degrees, just take your denominator and divide it into 180. Now that's only for reference angles because our numerator is just going to be 1. Uh, you couldn't have 2 6 because that's a third, and you can't have 2 thirds because that's more than 90 degrees. We know our reference angle has to be positive and also between 0 and 90 degrees or 0 and, and uh, pi halves. So uh, 6 will go into 180 30 times, so this is going to be 30 degrees. So that's going to be our reference angle. So we know which quadrant we're in. We know what our uh, reference angle is. Now we're going to draw and label our triangle. So it's always between the terminal side and the x-axis. Sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle are 1, 2, and the square root of 3. 1 being opposite the smallest angle, 2 being opposite the largest, and then th the square root of 3 being opposite the 60 degree angle. However, we are in quadrant 3, so because we're in quadrant 3, both x and y have to be negative. And then we go back and we look for the cotangent. Well, you can do one of two things. You can memorize what the ratio for cotangent is, or you could also go and say, well, the cotangent of our angle is basically the reciprocal of our tangent. So we can just take the reciprocal of tangent. Well, tangent's opposite over adjacent, so we're looking for the adjacent side which in this case is negative square root of 3 over the opposite side, which is negative 1. So when we simplify that, we'll get our cotangent of 19 pi 6 to be the square root of 3. <coughs>